Hi, good evening, everyone. Good evening. I want to thank you all for coming here tonight. Um, I think, this, is this the fourth year we've done this, the DNA talk show? Third year, third year. I, I, think, and I think this is my third time speaking here as well, second or third, I, I seem to forget. I want to thank you all for coming. This talk show, uh, when it first started, you know, Miss Kelly and I were a little leery about it. It seemed like it was talking about some really edgy topics. Um, some really, really hard topics, but ultimately it's important to remember that these are some really, really important topics to talk about. Institutional racism, misogyny, homophobia. These are negative aspects of the society that we live in. And sometimes as educators or in a school, we don't want to talk about them and we don't want to approach that issue. Part of it is a fear of saying the wrong thing. Part of it is a fear of uh, potentially uh, you know, not doing it justice and not talking about it with as much depth that is needed. But ultimately what is needed is to talk about it because the only way that you're going to get changed and the only way that you're going to get people woke is to have these conversations. Um, and I'm going to be honest, you know, I am a millennial. Most of you in the audience are in what's called Generation Z. And so it's our generations that really need to have these conversations that really lead to societal change. So I really want to thank the organizers of the DNA Talk Show, the Girl Up Club, and all of our social justice clubs on campus. You're doing a fantastic job making Evergreen Valley a great school, uh, but also really making an impact in our community, in our state, and in our country. Uh, so what I'm going to be talking about a bit is really focused on gay rights, talking a bit about my experience growing up gay, but ultimately talking about how um, with friends and with your community that things get better over time and it's because of hard work, perseverance, friendship, compassion, and love. So a bit about me. Uh, when I grew up, when I was a young kid uh, in elementary school, I could tell something was a bit different or that I was different from other boys. And it wasn't until I really got to middle school and high school that I started to have an idea what it was. Uh, at first, I tried to deny it. I tried to say, oh, you know, uh, that's just something's wrong. It's a phase or something's wrong with me. And I really struggled. You know, I struggled in middle school. I got D's and F's when I was in junior high and in middle school. I had to take summer school a couple years. Um, when I got to high school, I failed freshman math, right? Your principal failed freshman math. I had to take it in summer school. Um, eventually, though, I turned it around and I started really getting back on track uh, towards graduation. But it was around that time, around my sophomore year of high school or so, that I really started coming to terms with who I was. Uh, and if you are thinking back, trying to calculate how old I am, I went to high school between 2000 and 2004. And for those of you who've taken some social studies classes, you may remember that this was during the George W. Bush administration. This was when, um, when I was in high school, there were 16 anti, uh, we called it back then gay marriage, today we call it marriage equality, uh, measures on the ballot, and all 16 of them passed. And so it was a much different time than today. Um, and so when I was in high school, I came out. I started a gay straight alliance at my high school. And it was a little rough sometimes. You know, I got bullied. Uh, occasionally I would get mean notes uh, left for me either on my locker or um, you know, once on my car. And some of them said some really hateful and, and threatening things. Um, and really it was my friends that got me through it. Uh, and my friends that led me to believe that I had value, I had worth, and I could do great things. And you know, it got even more difficult when I came out, I was not shy about it. I was one of those folks that was really a social justice warrior. I felt that equality, equal rights, and the dignity of every person was something that was important. Unfortunately, uh, my family, my stepfather in particular, um, didn't really share my views. And so at times there was physical abuse, there was emotional abuse, and I kind of probably didn't handle it the way I should have in, in that I wasn't smart in keeping myself safe. I sort of let everyone know, even though I knew that it probably would lead to some consequences for me personally. Um, and what ended up happening, you know, we came to um, just really a conflict and he had a problem with who I was. Um, and it had to do with me applying for scholarships my senior year. Um, from organizations like Lambda Legal or PFLAG, which are prominent gay rights organizations. And 
I ended up in January of my senior year of high school getting kicked out of my house. And so that, that was kind of scary, right? I, I was 17 years old. Uh, I was getting ready to apply to colleges, starting to hear back from colleges, and suddenly I was homeless. And it was really, really scary. Um, I'm not going to lie. I sort of felt lost. I felt adrift. Um, and I didn't know what was going to happen, and I thought that maybe it could even impact my future itself. But I had a community and I had friends that cared about me. And my friend Wendy, who was one of my closest friends in high school, and her family decided to take me in. And so from, for about a year, basically from January uh, up until my first semester of college, I lived with them. And had that not happened, had they not extended that compassion to me, that love to me, to really care for me and who I really was, I don't know what would have happened to me. But because they did, I finished out high school strong. Uh, I graduated with honors from my high school. I spoke at graduation. I ended up going to UCLA uh, and graduating from there. And then fast forward you know, to today, and I'm your principal standing in front of you. And so it's important to remember that none of us go through life alone. All of us need to rely on other people. And together, we are stronger. And you need to extend compassion and kindness and love, not only to your friends, but to those around you as well. Now, let's take a bigger picture though, all right? If you are LGBTQ uh, in the audience, or if you have a friend who's in the audience, you may look at certain things that happen in society, or you may look at the national climate, or the dialogue, or the type of language that surrounds women, or uh, trans folks, or gay and lesbians, or bi folks, and you may get discouraged. But I want to show you some data that I hope will bring you some hope and that I hope will show that through your hard work and through events like this, you can make a substantive difference in the world that's more than data points on the screen, but can actually change people's lives, help them graduate, help them go to college, help them become a principal of an amazing high school. <laughs> so let's take a look. Let's go to our first slide. All right, so if you take a look up here, this graph is kind of cut off at the top. But basically it asks, should uh, same-sex relationships uh, be allowed for marriage, right? Should there be marriage equality? On the left-hand side here, you see 1996. I was 10 years old in 1996, uh, and 68% said of the country said it should not be allowed. It should be illegal. And fast forward, 2004, when I graduated high school, 55%, still a majority, said that it should be illegal, marriage equality. And then fast forward all the way to 2015, and you see that 60% of the country, a super majority, felt that marriage equality should be legal. Right? That's a big deal. And of course, the Supreme Court uh, ultimately made a decision that made it legal across the country. Let's go to the next slide. All right, this question right here is why that slide has that data. It's why that data started changing all right, over time. It's why people changed their minds. And the question is, uh, what's the age that you first told someone uh, that you were LGBT, lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender? And if you take a look, the average age kind of is around uh, high school, high school and college, basically. The median age uh, is 20 for all groups, 21 for lesbians, uh, 18 for gay men. Uh, I came out at 16, so I was a little ahead of the curve. Uh, and uh, no, that was a humble brag. Uh, <laughs> and 24 bisexuals. Coming out is incredibly important, um, but you have to do it safely, right? I came out because I wanted to change the world, but I didn't think of the impact that it would have on myself. And so when you are thinking of when should I tell other people, or when should I tell my parents and my family, think of yourself. Right? If you know that your parents are not accepting of LGBTQ folks, maybe don't tell them right now. Maybe wait until you go to college. Maybe wait until you're financially secure. I'm not saying don't come out to anyone. Come out to the friends that you trust, but make sure you take care of yourself. Don't end up in a difficult situation like me. Be true to yourself, but also make sure that you're taking care of yourself and you're being safe as well. Let's go to the next one. All right, I love this slide. This slide gives me so much hope. All right, in December of 1985, the question is, uh, would you be upset if you learned that your child was gay or lesbian? 
I was born in May of 1986, so this around that time. 64% say they'd be very upset if their child was lesbian or gay. 25% somewhat upset, so that's 89% with a negative answer. 2000, all right, you still have about 71% that would not be happy. 2004, around the time I graduated high school, you have about 60% still would not be happy. And then up until 2013, which is right around the time I got hired as the assistant principal here at Evergreen, uh, you see that it is about 40% uh, that would be upset. And then, for a first time in 2013, a majority said they would not be upset at all. And those numbers have continued to get better in the past five years. Let's go ahead. This one is huge as well. All right, why are the numbers improving? It's because people know gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender folks. If it weren't for the people in the 70s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s that came out that showed that gay, lesbian, bi, trans people are just like everyone else in the community and they have every job, uh, you wouldn't see societal change. And in 1993, only 22% said that they had a close friend or family member who was gay or lesbian. 2013, it was 65%. All right, and what that shows you uh, is the impact that coming out has had on the country. Raise your hand if you know who Harvey Milk was. Harvey Milk. All right, I see some hands raised. He was a very famous politician from San Francisco, one of the first uh, gay men elected to an elected office. Uh, he was assassinated uh, back many, many decades ago. Uh, and one of uh, the things he said sort of uh, was prescient because he had received threats. And he said, should a bullet enter my brain, let it destroy every closet door in the country. Mm -hmm. Because he knew that coming out of the closet is really what leads to societal change. When people interact with gay, lesbian, bi, and trans folks, they can see there's nothing to be afraid of. But again, be safe about it. Wait until it's a good option for you. Be honest with the friends that you trust. Let's go to the next one. All right, and this is what I want to end on, just some really, really positive news. And I'm not talking about electoral politics or Democratic, Republican politics. I'm talking about LGBT folks. And there was some really, really good news uh, on Tuesday night uh, for members of the LGBTQ community. And some really historic moments that when I was growing up, I couldn't even imagine that this was possible. Sharice Davids, the first Native American woman elected to Congress, from Kansas, of all places, right? This is not California, not Massachusetts. She was elected from Kansas, and she identifies as lesbian. All right, so Native American woman who identifies as lesbian elected to Congress on Tuesday night in Kansas. Also on Tuesday night, Jared Polis, the first openly gay man elected as governor. And he was elected as governor in Colorado on Tuesday. And there's also some other news. Kate Brown has been in the governor's office for, I believe, four years up in Washington. Uh, she's the first openly bisexual person uh, elected to a governorship, and she was re-elected on Tuesday night. And then Tammy Baldwin, in the right here, she's been senator from Wisconsin uh, for the past six years, and she was re-elected uh, on Tuesday as well. Uh, and she is also openly lesbian and in the United States Senate. Things are changing. It's your generation that's making the change happen. All right, You need to keep up the conversations uh, that you're having tonight. Uh, and sometimes, honestly, you need to keep up the pressure. And it can be hard to have these conversations. It can be uncomfortable to have these conversations. All of us have room to grow, all right? All of us have unconscious biases that we carry with us. But what makes you a good person is that you acknowledge that you're not perfect and that we can all get better. And even though it can be really aggravating when you see hate, even though you can see some really ignorant people in the world, try to approach them with compassion. Try to approach them in a way that shows that together we can make the world and our community a better place. And I feel inspired when I come to this every year because I see hundreds of people in the audience and this organization and this event is completely student-led. So I really, really want to thank you for being part of the change uh, in our community towards making it more compassionate, uh, more inclusive, uh, more equitable, uh, and really more caring for everyone. Uh, so thank you to the Girl Up Club, and that is all I have to say. Have a fantastic evening.